Uh, I, I learned a long time ago that fear is a greater motivator than, than hope. Uh, when you have an, an exquisitely talented candidate, hope can prevail, as Obama did uh, twice. But clearly, uh, the occupant of the White House presently uh, traded on fear. Um, and uh, I just want to suggest that a strategy would be to uh, help those who voted for him understand what they have to lose. Um, they have uh, the women that voted for him. Um, I don't know whether you want to use uh, uh, wire hangers uh, as a symbol again. Uh, we'll talk about it going backwards. Uh, that's precisely what's happening. Um, in terms of, of uh, workers' rights, the EEOC has been gutted. Um, the the uh, environment is being uh, spoiled. Uh, the, the fishermen and the hunting folk uh, that I live along, I'm in the 6th district, uh, so uh, I, I don't have an opportunity to vote for any of you guys. But um, these guys just don't understand uh, the, the, the trout. Uh,
I, when I was mayor, I had a, a, a permit to carry. I had a permit to carry because the borough code says that in, in times of insurrection, a mayor has the duties and powers of a sheriff. It doesn't explain what those duties and powers are. I thought, well, I got to hang them. If things go to pot, I'll put my little gun in my holster and I can walk around with my permit to carry. Then you renew it because if there's a revolution, I don't think no one's going to be checking your, checking your gun permit carry if there's a revolution. Now, as far as the Second Amendment rights, and that's what you're getting at, and, and sensible gun control, the overwhelming majority of the people in the United States, as I think you know, favor sensible gun laws. It, what we have in this country is beyond, is beyond the Wild West. To say anybody like the Wild West, no, it isn't. It's a crazy Wild West. Because what we're doing in the country with guns is simply fueled by a greedy industry with a very extreme, extraordinarily powerful mouthpiece. And you know who they are? The National Rifle Association. I was, I was a card-carrying member of the NRA for a few months. Uh, and their 125th anniversary, somehow I got on their mailing list. They had this real nice car, Eagle on it, really not out of 25. I looked at what I had to send them, 25 bucks, they sent them like four or five dollars. Send them. And I wrote in there, I'm sending you because there are some social attributes that hunting is generational. It's there's women that hunt. Now they think a lot of women hunt. But fathers and sons, they go out, it's a it's a family thing that they do. So I looked at calculated the value, because I put in there that social component that I'm giving you is four or five bucks or it was. But everything else that you stand for works against my job, who I am as a person, and hurts of society. You know what they did? They canceled my membership. But I kept the card, I kept the card because when I when we talked to the folks when they brought up this crazy gun stuff. Show on my card and tell my story. The, the answer, the answer, you're, you're, you, you, there is, you know, who, who was it? Who was the one that said, well, when they go low, they'll go high? That's a bad message. Bad message. When the dog's got you by the leg and he's biting you, you don't go high. You can't. You, you got, and, and, and the fact of the matter is, fighting fire with fire, when it has to be done, is socially appropriate. They have all kinds of money. They have all sorts of liars. Organization. It's awful. I mean you can't you can't you almost when you listen to what they say and what they advocate for, you can't make this stuff up. You got crazies in the fringes that blame the, the kids being shot, being murdered in Connecticut. That it was somehow the kids fake you know the kid was it was fake. I support, I support gun rights, I support good common sense, I would be a voice for common sense. They won't give me a nickel. I will take their money though, if they send me 10 bucks, I'll keep it. I won't send it back. But they will not have my support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. They get your question, as, as Bill pointed out, goes right to the Second Amendment, the right to bear arms. And we need to defend the Second Amendment with the same vigor that we defend the woman's right to choose. Alright, but before we talk about the Second Amendment, let's talk about the First Amendment. The first amendment is the freedom of speech. Okay, and this is our founding fathers, but these are important for a reason. But we don't have untethered freedom of speech. Freedom of speech is restricted. Right? You can't walk into an airport and say you were bomb. You just can't do those things. You can't threaten someone with their life. Okay, so we have protection on the first amendment. So freedom of speech is limited to some degree for protections for the good of public safety. So that same principle should apply to the second amendment. That you have the right to bear arms, however, reasonable protections for the common safety of our citizens really makes sense. Okay, now what are those reasonable restrictions? To make sure people on a terrible watch list don't, cannot buy guns. To make sure people with mental illness cannot have access to guns. To make sure we don't sell armor piercing bullets okay, to, to people who you know, have very power and the police officers who are required to protect us. Okay, we can't sell AK 47s. Okay, to the general public, want to be an old man, or, again, the police. So, so reasonable restrictions on the Second Amendment is something 
that is sensible and we should advocate and fight for very strongly. Tell me your name, sir. Matt. So I think I don't have to say anything because you said it perfectly. Actually, what you said is what our polling showed in the last election. We had polling that told us how people feel about gun rights in the 16th Congressional District. And what you said is exactly how the majority of people in this district feel about it. And that's what I'll be supporting. 